facts about Richards that you should know. Oh. He was left foot forwards, foot forward blocks, seventh most influential thinker of 2010-11. And I like this one. He had an outstanding contribution to the accountancy profession from the Association of International Accountants <coughs> in October of 2012. So this is someone who knows what he's talking about, about accountancy, and he's on a left-wing political platform. And that's really quite unusual. So I'm going to say no more, but I'm going to hand over to Richard to tell us what we need to know. I'll start by saying I'm not Owen Jones. <laughs> you can tell the difference, can't you? It starts from that bit, the greater. <laughs> I don't think you'll mind me saying that. There's another difference between me and Owen. So as far as I know, well, I know he hasn't got a wife, I know that's for sure. But I have. And she's a doctor, and a while ago she said, you know, you suffer with something that you're going to die with but not from. And I said, what's that? And she said, excitement by taxation. <laughs> and I don't think Owen suffers that one. And I do. And there's another little paradox which you just sort of alluded at. Quite a lot of people have pointed out there's some paradoxes in my career, and some of the things that I'm described as don't seem to go together. Socialist. Chartered accountant. <laughs> it's an unusual combination, but yes, I am. Look, I'm dressed like a chartered accountant today. Actually, I haven't changed much since yesterday. When I was before the House of Lords yesterday, so I dressed up for Nigel Lawson, who said to me, Mr. Murphy, are you right? And I said, Lord Lawson, yes. <laughs> That's how we carried on. Tax justice wasn't before the House of Lords ten years ago. Tax justice wasn't discussed at meetings like this ten years ago. In fact, at the very first meeting of the Tax Justice Network in 2003, um, which I had the privilege of chairing, there weren't many of us present. Nobody noticed, <coughs> there was no press coverage, and we all went away and wondered, will that be it? Well, it we've come a long way from there, a very long way from there. And I don't want to talk in a sense about <coughs> some of the issues that are now in the press frequently. You know, it's almost got to the point where we can say Marks and Spencer's, as happened this week, last week, is now a bit of a tax fiddler, well, perhaps a bit more than a bit of a tax fiddler, <coughs> and nobody's desperately surprised that NPower is a tax fiddler and says, no, we're not, then why did you pay vast amounts from the UK to Germany via Malta? Oh, it was convenient. Yeah, it was to save just 60 million quid in tax, which could have been used in this country and you took out of British customers, and you got the benefit from it. Those things have almost ceased to be news. Well, not yet. And we will keep on highly delighting those issues. But in somewhere like this meeting, Labour Representation Committee, and I've been proud to be a member of the <coughs> Lent Economics Advisory Panel, which is part of the LRC for quite a number of years, now, we can actually begin now to talk about something much more significant, about what this means. Because a while ago, we had to start creating the numbers of how big this problem was. And everyone told us it was rubbish. It couldn't be right. You know, the, when I came up with the figure of tax avoidance in 2008 of 25 billion, the government said, it's nonsense. They hadn't got a number, by the way. They had to, in a panic, and it's actually, you can trail this through the Treasury website. In a panic, they commissioned a number. And it's much smaller. And they say, see, our number's smaller than yours. And I say, yeah, but you see, your number doesn't include Google and Starbucks and Amazon and Apple and Microsoft and NPower and Marks and Spencers and all those other people. So your number is wrong, isn't it? Because we think that's tax... Oh, no, that's not tax avoidance, because it's legal. <laughs> and then came up with the idea that actually we're going to make tax avoidance illegal. And they said, you can't do that. Some of you will know the name of Dave Hartnett. And I remember a conversation I had with him in 2009. And he said, Richard, if you could actually end tax avoidance being legal, you would have achieved the ultimate goal. Well, actually, somebody called George Osborne appointed me to a committee earlier this year. I was very surprised, I have to admit. I didn't know George loved me that much. In fact, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. But there was no lefty on his committee, and he needed one to make it look as though it was slightly more credible than all the big firm accountants who were otherwise there. Because they don't think about systems, they let me write quite a lot of introduction to the new general anti-abuse rule. And one of the things we were able to put in there, which will become law this year, is actually it's no longer possible for anyone to say that all avoidance is illegal. 
in all avoidance is legal. Because actually, by July this year, you can put together a series of transactions which each stage is legal and the outcome will be illegal. The only difficulty is their kickback was it specifically says that doesn't apply to Google, Amazon and Starbucks and their friends. But we have made moves in the right direction. And what all this means is that this growing awareness has let us begin to talk about something else. And that is what the politics of this is about. And I think that's what's really important when we're talking tonight, and before I have to dash back to North Norfolk, which is where I will eventually be at bedtime, which was tomorrow morning <laughs> for me. But the politics of this are about actually the 99% as Occupy would have said and the 1%. It's not really 99 and 1, it's actually about 99.9 and 0.1, but let's not get too worried about the precise splits. This is about the power of global corporations over the rest of us. Because I was astonished <coughs> last week to hear the managing director of Waitrose saying on Radio 4 at quarter to nine in the morning, what the people of the UK will have to get used to is the fact that within 25 years, global corporations will be able to decide what they do, where they want to do it, how much, if any, tax they want to pay to anybody. And it will be tough luck because no state will be able to do anything about it. Oh, that's Waitrose saying that. And he's saying, we should accept it. And actually, I was so shocked by this, I stopped the car to listen to it because I was sort of almost at my destination. I thought, I've got to hear the end of this to discover who's saying this nonsense. I don't accept that. I don't think we should accept that. And actually, where we've got to in the tax justice campaign is that we're now able to say, we don't accept that. We are demanding that global corporations, literally the power of globalization, should be held to account locally by us. And that they owe us because we give them their license to operate. You know, at the last meeting I was at at PCS, I mentioned that I'm working at the moment on a list of retailers in this country who are tax avoiders or not. 25 we're looking at. It's <coughs> published in the middle of June, just before the GA, to add some more pressure on David Cameron. And these 25 include a lot of names you know. And some, and Marks and Spencer's is one of them. And one of the people in the audience said, well, where can I buy my knickers? <laughs> I think we've got to produce fair tax knickers now. Because yeah. you're going to have problems if you're trying to buy fair tax underwear in the future. Because you know, it's become so pervasive that these corporations don't think they owe us anything back. But that is what we've got to say. And having proved now that they basically don't pay their way, and having even got to the point where it's now commonplace to be asked by journalists, if you got this money, what could you do with it? And I can just say to them straight away, you know, suppose you know, you've got 20 billion back, what do you do? Well, no NHS comes. Well, if you were a bit less ambitious, well, no education comes. Yeah, because there are education cuts in reality. I know, I see it in my kids' school. I know there's NHS cuts. I'm married to a doctor. But you know, we all know there are cuts everywhere. We wouldn't need a bedroom tax. We wouldn't need cuts in benefits. We wouldn't need to have pensioners in stress and all those other things. We wouldn't need that if we could collect this money. We could actually have the civil service actually having pay rises, which are real pay rises and not pay cuts year in, year out, and therefore actually keep them motivated and working properly. All those things would be possible. We could have a decent society. But we can't because global corporations are basically holding us to ransom. When yesterday the chief executive of Apple stand up and say, we're not tax avoiding. When actually you've got $74 billion of profit in Ireland on which you paid no tax. And he says that's not tax avoidance. He said, well, it's not tax avoidance because it was legal. Oh. I don't care about your semantics. It's glaringly obvious the structure you put in place that might have been legal was designed to make sure you paid no tax in this country, in Germany, in Italy, in Spain, and they're all suffering crises, and so are we in our public <coughs> services. And you are putting that money where? <coughs> it's going to Bermuda. And I loved it last week when Google were in front of Margaret Hodge. They said, oh, we must be taxed where we make our technology. <laughs> Bermuda? 
<laughs> Silicon Valley is moved. <laughs> no, of course it hasn't. This is complete nonsense. These people will lie through their back teeth. And I'm happy to say they're lying through their back teeth because they do. They glare at you, obviously, and lie through their back teeth. They're lying about what they're doing. And the goal is very simple. Before I spoke to the House of Lords yesterday, the big four firms of accountants spoke. And they all said, the existing system works. And when I started, they said, do you want to make any statements? And they said, well, yeah, the existing system does work if you're the big four firms of accountants. But let's understand about them and what they do. They are in every major tax haven in the world making money out of this abuse. So of course it works for them. But that totally discredits their evidence. What we've got to talk about is the fact that for us, it doesn't work. For us, it's costing. For us, this is exploitation being seen. These people aren't scroungers, they're screwing us into the ground. And that's what they're trying to do, that's what they're succeeding in doing, that's what they think they can do. And yes, you're right, we've got to persuade Labour that this is more important. And actually, Ed Miliband came out with some pretty good statements in The Observer on Sunday, which I admit I knew about because they wanted me in the article. And then I read the statement issued by Ed Balls on Sunday night, and I went, oh, God, because it's so timid. <coughs> Labour has to say it will hold global corporations to account. One of our big achievements, one of the things we've created, is something called country-by-country country reporting. All it says is we want every multinational company around the world to publish a profit and loss account for every country where it <coughs> operates, including the Cayman Islands, please. Not the ones that you think are important, but actually the ones you don't think are important because you don't want us to know about them, and tell us how much profit you've got there and how much tax you pay there, and that way we'll know who the cheats are. And it, wouldn't it be easy, wouldn't it be so sensible for Labour to say, yes, we're going to do that, because we don't know how much tax is paid in this country, and if we did, we would have been exploited in this way. One of the reasons why they've got away with this is that until people like me came along and began to tear their accounts to pieces, there was nobody doing it. And that's one of the things I have done, is torn, torn their accounts to pieces. But Labour has to stand up and make commitments to that sort of transparency on behalf of us all, so we're not taken for a ride again. And that's what I demand from them to deliver tax justice in the future. So, absolutely fine that we're not screwed once more, because we won't be scroungers. They are. They must pay. We deserve the money that they're hiding from us now.